It's the Game Side Podcast. So we have here with us Lizzie Mentes from Here's Walder Recruiting, and she is the founder and CEO. Can you tell us a little bit more about your journey here? Yeah. So thanks so much for having me. I have been a video game recruiter for the past seven years. And three years ago, I started Here's Waldo because I felt like recruiting was missing a personal human element, you know, working with somebody that really cares about you and your job search. And on the flip side, really working with some one that understands your company and can really find you that talent to elevate your business. I started my business when I was five months pregnant, and I thought that I would probably have just a lifestyle business where it's just me, right? But I started Mm -hmm. and I reached out to my network and things exploded. And I'm, I'm definitely not having a lifestyle business anymore. So we're about 14 people right now, and we recruit mostly for small to medium companies that either have a successful, crazy successful game or have some solid backing from a venture capital firm or private investor or a large player in the industry. How long has it been since you guys started then? Yeah, I started in July of 2020. So almost three years of business milestone. Wow. And so now you're also a new mother? Wow. I've had two kids since starting my business. So I have a two and a half year old and a nine month old. Amazing. I don't really like using the word like girl bossing too much, but that is definitely what you're doing. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So here's Waldo specializes in like gaming recruiting, right? So yeah. do you think it's important to have that sort of specialization and experience? It's like different from, say, more endemic recruiting? Yeah, I think the value in being selective about what you recruit for is that you really get to know the industry and you really get to know people in the industry, no matter what it is you're recruiting for. I mean, even if you have a data scientist recruiting company, you know data scientists and you are able to very easily reach out to your pre-existing network when you have a new role. And games is a kind of a small community. Everybody knows one another. So Mm. I think it's really beneficial to work with someone that understands what people actually do and how to screen them. And they already have an idea of who to reach out to when they start working with you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is about networking to get into the gaming industry. And I'm assuming uh, that's how you probably ran into our CEO, Adam, right? (laughs) He's just everywhere. (laughs) No, he sat next to me at the bar at GDC. And so I met him there. I think networking is huge and leaving your house and just going to something in person, a mixer, right? Even if Mm -hmm. you don't really want to, I feel like the pandemic, I'm an extrovert Mm -hmm. and I even have to convince myself to go to these kind of events, right? So it is a lot, but you just never know who you're going to meet and where that connection will take you. Do you think in recruiting it's important to be an extrovert like that, like outgoing? No, I I think people skills are important and being able to read the room and gosh, people tell you all kinds of things. You have people who have high emotional intelligence, people who don't have it so much, people from all ages, all genders, all backgrounds. I mean, people from all over the world who really have a different way of communicating. So the most important thing is just being able to have a conversation and being able to relate to anybody and then being able to be assertive enough to manage that conversation and be able to share with them, here's some information about the company I'm recruiting for. Also determine if they are a fit for that or not by asking really pointed questions. My old Mm -hmm. boss, Say when you dance with a gorilla, go where the gorilla goes. So <laughs> if you're being recruited, you are who you are. I think mm-hmm. it's great to, you know, have an idea of what you want and be able to share that, right? It's it's your job if you're being recruited. What compensation do you want? You need to figure that out. What are you looking for? You need to have thought about that, right? You mm-hmm. need to have your answers. But on the recruiter side, you do, you need maybe to have a J, like a judgment kind of personality, but mm-hmm. you need to 
to discern if somebody is the right fit or not. And then some people you talk to, you get on the phone and they say, here's my background. Here's what I'm looking for. I've thought a lot about everything, right? And sometimes you talk to people and you say, tell me a little bit about what you do. And they say, I program. And you say, okay, great. Can you tell me a little bit more? You know, what are you working on? What's the project? You said that since you have experience and you already have your network, you know how to like field people. Are there like specific things you look for in terms of like video game recruiting then? What do I look for in a candidate, right? Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on what the company that I'm partnering with wants specifically, right? So some companies are startups and a lot of times a startup wants someone, Valve calls it T-shaped. So maybe you're a game designer, right? That's your vertical. Mm -hmm. Then you also understand a, a little bit about how to program and mm -hmm. you can touch on art or you can just you can do a variety of different things. You've, you've done production. So a lot of times a startup wants somebody that's a little bit more broad, where mm -hmm. a big you want somebody that's, you know, specifically an AI gameplay engineer, and that's the one function that they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, go where the gorilla goes. What do you want? And so my job is really just to understand what the company thinks good is. The only thing that makes me say hard pass, hard no, is mm -hmm. if someone is, you know, derogatory or dismissive or just, you know, awful and rude to somebody on my team, I'm not mm -hmm. going to share your profile with anybody. That's just a really big red flag. But mm -hmm. if someone doesn't have incredible communication skills, perhaps the role doesn't require it. Or perhaps they don't have great communication skills with me, their recruiter, right? But when they talk about what they do, they're able to really get into it. So unless someone is basically a jerk, mm -hmm. I let the company decide if they like them and their communication style or not. And as mm -hmm. I get you know more information about what the company likes and doesn't like, if it's a company... I've worked for for a while. I always say that you have a recruiter sense. So I'll tell my team, this person's going to get hired. <laughs> because Whoa. You, Whoa. And you can just tell. Tell. Yeah, totally. After a while, you know, this is the one. I found them and it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, that must feel super rewarding, right? Just being able to help both the company and people looking for a job out. That's awesome. It's kind of like shoots and ladders, right? You have a mm -hmm. lot of things that are going to go wrong throughout the process and people are going to drop off for whatever reason. But when it works, it's amazing. You get someone, the thing that they're looking for, right? Maybe you get them a remote job so they can move to be closer to their family. Maybe you connect them with their dream company mm -hmm. or the best to me is connecting them with a company they didn't even know about, but turns out to be the best possible thing for them. And then watching the companies that you've hired so many people for succeed mm -hmm. is so exciting, right? The game's great or this feature of their platform or their engine is the killer feature that everybody's so excited about. And you hired the person that made that. It's the best. Yeah. And you build uh -huh. long-term relationships with people too. I mean, a lot of people I've hired, now I hire four, right? So everything mm -hmm. comes full circle. Love that. But earlier you mentioned red flags. I was wondering if we could actually maybe go into that. I don't know if you can share like horror stories, but those are always interesting. Yes, I was thinking about my horror stories. <laughs> I, I once had an engineer miss a call. This is bad with a director, no, a VP of engineering. And he messaged after the call and said, sorry, he was pooping. This is a real thing, like wild, you know, as every recruiter had total, total horror stories. I had someone get an offer oh and then, you know, the background check. I've had somebody send a note before their first day that they're quitting. Amazing. I had someone show up pre-pandemic when final interviews were in person more regularly, mm -hmm. reeking of alcohol and in dirty clothes to the oh interview. My God. And so, I mean, recruiting is interesting because people are strange, right? And people mm -hmm. look odd things. And so oh it's always crazy. Always keeps you on your toes. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> I guess uh, 
uh, for our listeners and for myself, I feel better about my, how I've done in my job interviews than if that's the bar, very low bar. <laughs> I want to also talk about that that recruiter sense you said you get. I, what do you think makes you feel so sure sometimes? Like, what gives you that feeling? Yeah, I feel like a little bit it's subconscious, right? And you just have that gut feeling and entrepreneurs always, they tell you that. I made this decision because of my gut, right? And what does that Mm -hmm. even mean? How do you replicate that? So it's totally a gut feeling. But I think if they're able to really clearly articulate what they did, or maybe let's say they built the anti-cheat system for Call of Duty, something Mm -hmm. like that, that's so incredible. And you're hiring an anti-cheat engineer. I'll just make it up, right? Mm -hmm. That's thrilling and then if you ask them what they specifically did and they say hey this idea started in my head and I built out this whole system from scratch right Mm -hmm. that's always the most exciting thing on the engineering side and on the art side I think if someone has an absolutely killer portfolio and they're able to walk you through the way in which they created something and really speak to their work that's thrilling and then it's always exciting to talk to somebody who's worked on one of the most popular games, right? If they mm-hmm. work at Naughty Dog or if they shipped Red Dead Redemption or something that's, you know, famous and thrilling, that's mm-hmm. always really exciting. But yeah. sometimes I think going back to red flags, I also want to make sure that you're you're able to talk about what you do mm-hmm. and you might have worked on a bunch of really great games. But I don't need you to tell me how good you are. And I had a hiring manager tell me this guy wrote on his resume how he was superb and excellent at what he was doing. And the hiring manager told me, it's like being attractive. You don't tell people, well, I'm really attractive. That's kind of a turn off of a thing to say. And so another thing that I screen for is just humility. If you just, Mm -hmm. you know, talk down to me and man or woman explain me about what you've done Mm -hmm. it's kind of rude right I don't need you to tell me how good you are I can see how good you are there's being good and then there's being a good person other people want to work with Mm -hmm. and there's a balance there and the balance is different for every company how much you care about skills and I think after you've hired maybe I've been a part at least 600 hires I mean a lot of them then eventually you have this sense it just comes with time too a lot of recruiting comes with time a lot of people yes yeah the best and I keep in touch with a lot of them one candidate I tried to hire is now my friend she lives near me and we have kids the same age and our kids play so that's so wholesome I don't even know how you keep in touch with that many people. I feel like I would lose track of like such a huge network right away. So that's definitely a skill. Yeah, it's a lot of communication for my job. I'm communicating with companies. Mm-hmm. I'm communicating with my team. They are communicating with so many candidates. I'm at the point where I don't really have candidates unless maybe it's someone I hired in the past that reaches back out to me to help them with a job, something like that. But it's so much contact and LinkedIn's crazy. I, I seriously write down like, text so and so with because you definitely have to juggle conversations with so many different people and be able to switch gears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds like a lot of um, like project management as well, right? Yeah, yeah, project management and then coming up with creative solutions mm-hmm. to problems, right? I think it's a lot of problem solving Mm -hmm. i need a job but here are my requirements like okay well i have this role that matches two-thirds of them would that be Mm -hmm. okay what about this and kind of being able to think outside of the box Mm -hmm. because if you are an internal recruiter let's say at amazon you're just working on the alexa Mm -hmm. and you're always recruiting for alexa and you can say your pitch in your sleep and you know you're so dialed in but when you work at an agency you have a lot of different clients, some which are active, some which you're not hiring for. But you have to remember, this company mentioned to me, if I find a unicorn, 
game designer Mm -hmm. with free to play experience that they'd want to talk to them. You have to be able to remember that and then be able to ask the candidate about it. Maybe there's not a job description, right? It's a it's basically just a lot of matchmaking. Oh yeah, that is a good way to put it. Matchmaking. What? <laughs> yeah. Could just look like dating kind of. <laughs> yeah, actually though. It's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's fun and I love it, right? But I think for a lot of people, they have a ton of anxiety mm-hmm. around their job search and just not knowing how to navigate getting a job oh definitely I remember before I was at GameSite and this is a really good culture fit for me I felt especially coming right out of college I felt like I had to like change myself or be more like business or be more formal to try to fit what people were looking for but I think that's not necessarily the right thing right my personality is one of my strengths right I feel like the company should be a good culture fit with you yeah. Totally. And if it's not, you're going to leave. And I think true. People get so caught up in money and it's mm-hmm. been out of control. Basically, COVID hiring was nuts. Comps were nuts. Big companies were just throwing money at people. Like the offers that I've given, the offers that people have told me about are absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. And while it might be exciting, then you might not also even like the job, right? Mm-hmm. And so I talk to candidates a lot about that. Hey, a fang company is offering you, I don't know, $400,000, right? Mm-hmm. But you're not that excited about it. It depends on your situation. If you have five kids and they're all about to go to college, mm-hmm. perhaps you do need to take that big company job, right? That's okay. I think it's just important to be honest with yourself about what you want and what you care about. And I totally sound like a jaded recruiter when I say this, but money matters to a point. And you need to figure out how much money do I need to live to pay my bills? And that's going to vary based on everyone's individual circumstances, where they live, their obligations, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, how much do I want to maintain my lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And this is if you're probably a little more senior, right? Right. And then after that, it's up to you. That's based on how much you want to make money versus how much you want to really enjoy your job. And also about just where is this job going to take you, right? Maybe you work at a startup and the founders have sold their last five companies Mm -hmm. and they're crazy successful and it's small. You get to work hand in hand with one of them. It's a 10 person company. And you get to create all gameplay systems, okay, from Mm -hmm. scratch as an engineer versus you're going to be one of 500 people that builds gameplay systems. The systems already exist and you're just going to be refactoring them a little bit and adding Mm -hmm. in a few things here and there. The big company is going to pay you more money, but the little company might propel your career forward. So where is this job going to take you? now but where's this job also going to take you in five years right what's the opportunity what are you actually learning and many people are so caught up in money depending on where you are in the salary band but if you're over a certain amount what difference is this really making for you right you know i love that as a recruiter you're also like a a lifestyle advisor and a financial (laughs) advisor you're like helping people make good decisions right good long-term decisions yeah and i think it's just about figuring out how people think sometimes it's figuring out how their significant other thinks Um, (laughs) once i talked to somebody's wife he was like you know what let's skip this back and forth why don't you just talk to my wife (laughs) well talk to the wife about the job that's an advisor and kind of helping them get clarity on the overall recruitment situation because people feel uncomfortable and panicked and Mm -hmm. i see a lot of people Especially right now when there's yeah. there's some economic distress, you could say, they feel like they just have to take a job, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes maybe they have 10 interviews lined up and then they mm-hmm. get an offer and then they just accept the offer. But this is such a common mistake. The company is not going to make you decide that day. And if the company is mm-hmm. giving you a 24-hour window to decide, that is a red flag. 
So I think it's great just to be honest and say, hey, everybody, I'm interviewing. I plan to make a decision on um, June 1st mm-hmm. without, without work, right? It's just about communicating instead of panicking and going mm-hmm. with the first thing that comes to you. But it's situational, right? If you, maybe you've been laid off for six months and you just need a job. In that case, mm-hmm. it's a, a bit more understandable. Right. Yeah. I do want to talk more about like the general job market as well, because right now is definitely, uh, unfortunately, a season of layoffs and things like that. Um, yeah. And I wonder if uh, I may be totally off base here. I'm just uh, guessing, <laughs> doing an educated guess here. But I feel like like you said, there were a lot of crazy offers during the pandemic. Things were shifting. People put out a lot of money. And then afterwards, uh, like you said, there's economic distress and there's inflation. And a lot of tech companies are laying off now. And it's it's really unfortunate. And I wonder if like from your side of things where you can see more, you have like a more clear perspective. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of money being given by large companies mm-hmm. through the pandemic. So much that I think it's a red flag in the end. If you're underpaid and you're getting a huge pay raise, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. But if you were, you know, working at a fine company and a company offers you to double your salary, but you know that's so out of industry norms, that's mm-hmm. not sustainable for the company. So ironically, I feel like a lot of the layoffs are from companies that have been paying so much over the normal amount because mm-hmm. That is not sustainable for them. Their burn rate's high. They can't mm-hmm. keep employing all of these people. And they were reacting to a low inventory situation, which we had, and now they're correcting. So I think as a job seeker, you need to have a red flag if you're making a lot of money. And mm-hmm. you also need to think, gee, I was working at a company paying me, you know, $200,000 base, 100000 bonus, and 200 in stock a year. Don't anticipate that that's going to continue. Be mm-hmm. thankful. Thank your lucky stars. You <laughs> need opportunity to make a lot of cash, right? Mm-hmm. But don't expect that. Games is an interesting place right now right. because I think tech is having a meltdown. Yeah, Big companies are having a meltdown. Big companies that had a game studio are part of the layoffs, and we're really seeing that. Mm-hmm. However, if you're a senior and above, talented professional it's possible you could still have four or five competing offers right now like there's still a pocket of competition there's small companies that still have a lot of funding there's Mm -hmm. companies that have investment from tencent natties embrace Saudi arabia right some korean publisher those Mm -hmm. companies are still doing really well and then there are all of these companies kind of adjacent to games Mm-hmm. There's a ton of vehicle companies. There is games meets film companies, robotic mm-hmm. companies, and they're all hiring people with a game background too. Interesting. So it's still pretty competitive. Employment is 3.4%, which is the lowest rate since 1969. Oh my. But if you're working at a big company and you got laid off, it's just an expectation reset from mm-hmm. what you were making. And I think the people that are having the hardest time with this are people that graduated into a booming economy. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have graduated in the last five years and the level which they came in at was so high Mm -hmm. and they continue to get in the promotion cycle they were on to try and hang on to them brings them at such a high level compared to somebody who entered the economy during a recession so ironically, sometimes someone with five years experience might be making the same amount as someone with 20 years experience just because the starting point was so, so different. So for those younger people, they have mm-hmm. to realize that they were in this bubble and this bubble has popped and it's yes. done. So what a great ride. What a great experience. Hopefully you saved your cash and you're not yeah. going to it anymore. And the other funny thing Everybody or the whole pandemic told me, hey, I want to work at a big company because it's stable. Mm-hmm. It's not stable right now at okay. all. You're probably more likely to get laid off at a massive company, right? True. So people are resetting what's good and what they want. And I think thinking more about what do I personally value? Mm-hmm. What company aligns with 
what I'm truly looking for versus getting caught up in, oh, my friend's making this amount at this large company. Mm -hmm. There's a stat about how much most people like their job. And I think there's a different phase in everybody's life Mm -hmm. where you're focused on maybe supporting your family, buying a house, right? Those are Mm -hmm. kind of graduate school in the next, like, you know, first 10 years, maybe you would do that, right? Mm -hmm. Most people have kids generally before they're 35-ish, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are things you think about then. But when I start working with candidates who are, let's say, in their 40s or beyond, sometimes it shifts because depending on their career path, Mm -hmm. If they had worked, let's say you worked at Microsoft for 15 years, depending on your life, but it's probable that you have made a great amount of money during those years, Mm -hmm. right? And then some people hit a point where they're actually just looking for what makes them feel good and Mm -hmm. what they're passionate about. And I think it just depends on their life. But I do see that once they've gone through the cycle of working at a big company. That's a great perspective, actually, because they do look for something more self-actualizing so yeah it's definitely good perspective I also wanted to mention you said something really interesting about gaming adjacent companies and a lot of these companies are also hiring people who have gaming experience I'm I'm really curious about that yeah I mean I think the industry is obviously evolving so quickly Mm -hmm. but I know for instance Elon Musk got into hiring game programmers whether you like him or not that's what he thinks Mm -hmm. so he hired a lot of people for tesla spacex there are a lot of maybe companies old school companies looking to reinvent themselves and maybe that's through like a virtual reality app or or an experience in their store you know some Mm -hmm holographic display or gamify something in an Mm -hmm. anyone kind of looking to refresh themselves often looks for people with a game background and I think somebody who makes more of a casual maybe a mobile game or some immersive experience would be pretty excited to work there but I think it would probably be a much harder transition if you're working on Warzone and Halo, you know, do you want to make some immersive experience for Burning Man? Um, maybe <laughs> about Burning Man, right? But probably not so much. Mm-hmm. Interesting, though. That's just good advice in general for like maybe people listening and who are looking for a job. You can also look in these adjacent industries, which is very cool. Yeah, I think yeah. there are more and more industries that will be using game engine technology the mandalorian the show was made with unreal engine there's experiences where if you want to see you know maybe test drive a car something like that you're able to do that virtually i think there's a lot of new technology that's coming out and you could start there as long as you're really learning how to work in a game engine either doing art or engineering that's a huge benefit i would also say less now but people have put large companies on a pedestal and Mm -hmm. you have this goal of working at a big company but when you're starting your career sometimes it's truly beneficial to work at a small company where you Mm -hmm. can be shaped and you can learn a lot of different things and try a lot of different things so Mm -hmm. you can really become skilled in a variety of areas and if you want to specialize later you can but at least you've tried different things out i also wanted to talk more about nowadays is it mostly like a lot of companies are remote or has that landscape changed at all yeah so obviously amazon's requested people go back in the office Mm -hmm. and i truly think that some large companies return to office is just a way to get people to voluntarily quit instead of having them laid off from a liability perspective. Oh, that's that crazy. Oh, it truly is. Mm-hmm. And some people have crazy leases for years in major offices and they want people to come back. I do hear, especially from game studios in certain departments, 
that they really miss the collaboration of being in the office, which just Mm -hmm. can't be replicated. So some companies are doing return to office. Some companies, maybe if they're starting out, feel that that team dynamic is better. Mm -hmm. But there are people who have moved to just the middle of nowhere and (laughs) moving back. They bought a house. They have family and their families in school. So Mm -hmm. it depends on the candidate. And people have these policies that say, hey, my company is returned to office. But then what do you do if your best employee says, hey, I moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm not coming back? Do you let that person go? Probably not. So then Mm -hmm. there are these exceptions and kind of interesting. I mean, my company is remote. I don't I don't have the need for an office nor Mm. desire. I go work somewhere. I go to a co-working space sometimes so I can be around other adults <laughs> and leave my house. I have one person in particular I used to hire for him, and he was so hard about remote. No one can be remote. Remote does not work. The pandemic happened. His company became remote. He loves being remote now. He himself, <laughs> right? And that's something that he will always embody just because he tried it. So mm-hmm. I think that the pandemic really forced a lot of people to go that route and there are some people that aren't coming back Mm -hmm. definitely i personally love working remote i can run a load of laundry while i work amazing (laughs) i love it too and i think especially being a mom that's working for me just to be able to be with my kids during the day Mm -hmm. is really special and if i have a newborn like I have to take care of my newborn, right? And being able to have that flexibility is huge. That's another thing the pandemic has provided, not working eight to five in the office. Because Mm -hmm. I think you're a caregiver or a mother or, you know, you have some other obligation in your life. You really can't work in an office from eight to five. So Mm -hmm. being able to offer remote work increases the likelihood of diversity in your team because can accommodate people that can't do the traditional office thing. Love that. Actually, I sort of wonder how you got into games recruiting initially, right before you started your company. Yeah, I'll tell you first how I became a recruiter and then how I got into games recruiting. Sure. Uh, so I, I was also at a bar and I would just like to say I don't live at a bar or anything, but <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I go out with my friends. So I was at a bar and I knew I wanted to do something with people. I loved working Mm -hmm. with people. And I met a woman who told me about recruiting. And I thought that sounded great. She introduced me to someone that worked at the company that I had previously worked at. So Mm -hmm. I did the interview and they ended up rejecting me. They sent me a classic rejection letter. Mm -hmm. And so... I thought I would be a good recruiter and I didn't really understand my reason for rejection. And Mm -hmm. I'm obviously type A, so I thought they should give me a chance. So I researched the CEO and I was looking through all of his recommendations and I viewed one of his recommendations and um, he reached out to me and talked to me a little bit and gave me some coaching. And Mm -hmm. he recommended that I reach out to the CEO and I tell him that I, you know, here's here are the reasons that you want. I want the job. Here's the reasons I'll be successful. So I wow. sent this email a message and I asked if he would be open to having a call with me. And he said he would. I researched all about being a recruiter. I knew about programming languages. I knew about so much stuff. And I told him if he gave me a shot, I would be his best recruiter. And I was. I was the best recruiter in the company for three years. I started there. And then there were two directors and they had worked for Call of Duty. Oh, and a wow. Fortune 50 company hired them to build out an innovation lab. Mm-hmm. And so they brought me in and I didn't know anything about games. I remember asking, they had one, well, just one engineer in them. And so I asked the engineer to explain a little bit to me about games and you know how they were built because it's, it's bamboozling to learn about a new industry and learn how they speak and then mm-hmm. learn how to ask someone who's so good at what they do a question about how they do what they do, right? It's kind of intimidating. But I, I watch YouTube every day on my way to work. I asked everyone I knew if they could explain stuff to me. And I really taught myself so much about the game industry. 
And I started recruiting everyone I recruited that was nice and open to sharing more with me about how things work. I asked them. And pretty soon I had hired 25 people and I built out their studio and it was amazing. And then the people there referred me to their friends and their friends and their friends. And then I just built my whole business word of mouth from people that had worked with me before. And then I decided that I wanted to quit and start my own business, really focused on quality over quantity and relationships. So I reached out to everybody in my network. Mm -hmm. People I didn't work with previously because I had to abide by that. And then I just started building relationships and started recruiting for companies from people that I had known. And that's still my business today. Pretty much everything has stemmed from building Amazing. once. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. I think actually when you did have to recruit people in gaming, they had to be able to explain themselves clearly so that anyone could understand, right? It did help. And sometimes I will do general recruiting still if I'm asked to. The other thing that's hard when you're recruiting is sometimes you're talking to somebody who lives in another country and English is not their first language. Mm -hmm. So have a language barrier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe a bit of a culture barrier of just the way in which they explain things. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they have their PhD in machine learning or something and you need to ask them questions. You need to be able to <laughs> have that conversation with ease. But, you know, sometimes people go so, so deep technically to you because people talk about what they do in such great detail like that. So some roles are harder than others, but I think you just need to be able to handle that gracefully. And, you know, they might know you're having a hard time understanding them. So just asking for clarity and letting them know while you understand about the role, you yourself are, are not an engineer. So <laughs> if they could explain it to you, like, you know, maybe you're your seven-year-old or your that grandma be, or that would be great she, that'd be great I think that's definitely a testament to your communication skills if I was in that situation I'd just I think I would just nod <laughs> you know what you, know, you have to get the information you right. have to know if they're the right fit or not and you have to make sure that they're interested in whatever you're telling them about so mm -hmm. yeah amazing and then I also want to sort of go into maybe new exciting trends you've seen behind the scenes or any uh, interesting ways the gaming industry is evolving into the future? Yes. There are a lot of new technologies entering the market. I think, let me say AI off the bat because that's right. all I'm talking about right now. AI and games, AI creating concept art. I mean, mid-journey is crazy. And I think you might hate it but we're gonna have to adapt to it so that's huge there's new vr headsets coming out apple's announced their vr headset oh, paul wow. more lucky said that it seems very good so that's some hype being built around it mm -hmm. maybe apple set that up but maybe not sony is creating psvr2 so that's exciting I think Epic is kind of just taking over in terms of the Unreal Engine and mm -hmm. their offerings. I know Tim Sweeney has a big vision for the metaverse and bringing different experiences into Fortnite. And I mm -hmm. think other people are kind of playing off this. So having a virtual experience is a new way to communicate and a new way to socialize. That's really growing. People feel very very strongly about NFTs, uh, but there is something to be said about being able to bring an item game to game. Mm -hmm. So I think that that concept will continue. The joke at GDC was AI is the new blockchain NFT. That's the new buzz. But uh, there's still companies doing some blockchain games. They're Shrapnel. They're making a first person shooter using blockchain. So excited to see their game. It looks good. Then I think there are a lot more indie games that we're seeing crazy success from right now. I love that. Uh, 
Yeah. And those games are exploding. And then there's also a lot more games doing user-generated content. That's huge, too. You also love that, yeah. The new hardware specs are crazy. The frame rate, which you're able to get in with some of the new hardware, is incredible. And then just the sheer volume of games that are being created, right? More than ever, you have so, so many options. Mm -hmm. And there are so many companies getting into the space, especially large amounts of foreign money. Scopely just got acquired for, I want to say, $5.9 billion from Saudi Arabian companies. So go off. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. And then just the consolidation that's happening in the industry. Mergers and acquisitions. Right. Crazy. Acquisition. Yeah. Acquisition. See if that goes through. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that would be the largest acquisition, right? That would be absolutely nuts. And then from there, do other major tech companies acquire other gaming studios? And how much are, after all of the layoffs, how much are these big companies going to invest in games? You know, is that really the future that they see or have they switched to AI now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was a lot of stuff. <laughs> Definitely gaming, because it is part of the tech industry, it's always like pushing forward with these technologies. And uh, for example, you mentioned like VR and like what Epic Games is doing. And, you know, VR has been, the technology has been around for a while now. And it hasn't really, I feel like, gone necessarily that mainstream, every household level launch yet. But every time a new technology is introduced in the gaming industry, it's not like it goes away, even if it doesn't hit those peaks it's coming back again and we'll see i did not know apple was trying to make their own vr headset so that that's huge yeah releasing soon and apple has this crazy following i think too i mean when free to play games came out everybody hated that, right all the traditional gamers had so many awful things to say when vr came out and i recruited for it in 2016 everybody told me vr will never go anywhere this technology is going to die you know i think same with NFTs and blockchain, right? But mm -hmm. I think with any new technology, there is a potential use case for it. You just have to mm -hmm. find that game that does so well that makes everybody buy the hardware or you know, get into blockchain or convert in some mm -hmm. way. So it's always interesting to see the pushback from people that just are really focused on traditional console gaming. And I mean, even games as a service is newer, right. right? Versus just making a game, selling it for $60, people play through, and it's done. Mm -hmm. A lot of interesting stuff. Honestly, uh, as a gamer, it's a, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is amazing. I know a lot of companies, I've heard that they just auto-filter your resume and like look for keywords, right? Yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing. Right now... Their jobs are getting so many applicants. One of the companies I work for said over the weekend, they had 500 applicants on a single role. At that mm -hmm. point, you can't look through that. You just right. can't. Nobody can do that very well. And mm -hmm. so your resume might not even be seen. So if you're applying for a job, I think it's really important to figure out how you can stand out or how can you get a reference, right? How can mm -hmm. you connect at that company that could actually help you because the chances that someone's seriously reviewing your resumes if they have hundreds or thousands of applicants mm -hmm. is low. I had talked to somebody the other day and she told me she wouldn't even get a reply because she saw how many applicants there were. And mm -hmm. then two months later, she'll just get a rejection email because they hired somebody in the pile, right? But she never even heard back from them. Thanks. So I think people should think about other ways to get a job than just applying through a job portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I guess using a good recruiter. <laughs> True. <laughs> and also, quick plug for good recruiters. A good recruiter might tell you about a job that's not posted, right? Mm, the company yeah. has told me, hey, Lizzie, I think in a couple of months I'm going to need this role. And I'll think about that and I'll find the perfect person or I'll talk to somebody and I'll say, hey, might you be interested in this company? This just happened the other day. And my candidate said, I love that game so much. That's my favorite game ever. I didn't even know that they had roles open. 
and they didn't even have this job posted, right? Mm -hmm. My recruiter senses are going up. That's so cool. The job wasn't posted. He would have never found it if I hadn't reached out to him and just made that random connection. So Mm -hmm. work with a recruiter, work with a good recruiter. If you are a job seeker, go to the recruiter's profile, see how long they might stay at their jobs, right? Every couple months is not a good sign. Mm -hmm. And check if they have any recommendations. And check how many people they're connected with as well, because that will indicate how good of a recruiter they are, basically. Should people who are looking for jobs now, then should they reach out to recruiters? When you reach out, don't just say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Here is my resume. That's kind of rude. And I might get 40 LinkedIn messages a day. So it's kind of overwhelming for me. And I really might not be able to see that. But mm-hmm. instead, I mean, whether it's an internal recruiter that just works at a studio or an agency, you could say, hey, I am looking for a job around, you know, in this kind of role. I'm looking for a marketing role, right? And mm-hmm. I see that you have a job posted or I wonder if you might have a job posted in the future. Would you be able to have an informational interview with me so I can learn more about your company or I can l- learn more about what you do? That's Mm -hmm. really respectful and you're asking to just explore and you're not pushing like, hey, find me a job. Not my job to find you a job. I would love to help you if you're respectful and understand how I work. But I think people often don't understand how recruiters work. People who are looking to break into the industry, I get a lot of questions about that. Mm -hmm. So I can't help you. If you're looking for your entry level job, That's not something we do. Companies pay us to find people they can't find themselves, which generally means mid-level and above. But if you are looking to get a job in games, I think you can participate in a global game jam. That's fantastic. I'm happy to put you in touch with them. Or you can have a portfolio, an art station. If you're an engineer, contribute to an open source project. Do something that makes you stand out and shows that you care about the industry and you are going out of your way to make a contribution in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that you should go to in-person events for sure because you don't know who you're going to meet there and that person might open a ton of doors for you. So go network and go contribute and update your LinkedIn profile with (laughs) information about what it is you do so a recruiter can find you Mm -hmm. wow amazing tips pro tips i feel like anyone listening to you 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 will get a job if you follow these tips (laughs) hopefully hopefully yeah thank you so much for being here it was so informative i feel well informed thank you so much for your time and yeah shout out to adam for uh the introduction (laughs) thanks adam thanks for (laughs) sending me (laughs) 